Sacred Chuku, look with favor upon your abject supplicants and cast the mantle of your protection around our shoulders. In the name of the power, give of your generous bounty so that we may serve your needs forever. Our flesh and our blood are yours. Behold your bride. Great Chuku, I pray the bloodletting pleased you. For your humble subject lives in your shadow. What are you doing here? You know very well. I have every right to be here. I'm witch of the coven. You were expelled. Because of jealousy. I should have led the worship. Get out. Not until I take Chuku. He's mine. Before Alistair died, he promised to leave it to me. He belongs to me. You stole Chuku. He belongs to me and I'm taking him. You're crazy. This god, it belongs to me and me alone. This altar is his home, and here he will stay. You're not a believer. You're in it for what you can get. To you, he's no god. Get out. And the kicks you get from these sacrifices... Get out! Get out! Oh! No longer remember this card now. Get out! Get out of here! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out!
Good morning, Neil. Ronnie, your room is a mess. Why in the hell don't you clean it up? Oh, I'll, I'll do it later. Get me some coffee. You'll need three cups at least to face that bundle of bills. Why, what's so special about them? Well, they have to be paid. I've sorted out the overdue on this morning's mail, especially that one on top. Second notice from the Inland Revenue. And that Amsterdam export house, screaming for their money. Yes, I know, I know. With a bank balance that won't buy a decent lunch, they'll just have to wait. They won't. Getting nastier every day. It's not depressing, Mironi. And while we're praying for a miracle, get your ass over to the stall on Portobello Road and try to stir up some business. Take a couple of those uh, ivory chess sets, the African love rings. They're safer than the pill. Oh, well, those uh, psychedelic heads and Indian headbands. Mm. I'll do my best. Just don't turn down any sale. I won't. I promise. Good morning. May I help you? I'm Detective Sergeant Wall. This is Detective Constable Russett. Are you Mr. Neil Mottram? Yes. You know this woman? She seems vaguely familiar. Her name was Muriel Sharp. Was she a customer of yours? Oh, no. No, unfortunately, no. She came in a few times, but just to browse. <laughs> Never bought a thing. Uh, the last time was five or six weeks ago. Sure? Yes, of course, I'm sure. Why are you questioning me? Her body was fished out of the river by some bargemen near the Isle of Grain. That must have been a grisly sight. It wasn't pretty. Yes. Well, I'm really sorry to hear about that, but... What has it got to do with me? I mean, oh, you're not implying that... Oh, no, Mr. Mottram, we're calling on you only because your name was in an address book we found in her flat. One of 15 names. Just a routine check. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps you better talk to the other 14. We will. Oh, thank you. Sorry to have troubled you. I don't like that bugger. Now call it, lad, and don't jump to conclusions. The woman wasn't robbed, but according to the coroner's report, was not sexually molested. But before anything else, we have to find a motive. Motive or not, I still don't like that arrogant bastard. Muriel Sharp is your sacrifice in blood. Days and nights have passed. If I am to serve you again, I beseech your help. How long have you been back? Long enough to have seen and heard you. Oh. Neil, you... You killed Muriel. It was an accident. Don't stand there like a blithering idiot and don't give me that shocked routine. You could demand a sacrifice in blood if you got it. You and those crazy witches may call it sacrifice. The police will call it murder! Son, you are, you miserable ingrate. You were starving a filthy rag and beggar when I picked you up. Sleeping in Hyde Park, hustling old queens when you could turn the trick. I took you in, cleaned you up, clothed, housed and fed you, taught you a profession. This will be yours. Please, Neil, I'm... I'm not ungrateful. I even tried to bring you under Chuku's protection. I know. But I'm not convinced. I don't believe. I don't feel as you do about this bloody silly idol. Dare on one word against Chuku. It's only for your good. For your safety. You 
risk everything for this this idol. And what has he brought us? Look at the fix we're in. No luck at the stall and nothing here. If we can't raise the rent, we're going to have to pack up. Chuka will help us. But in the meantime, you're right. We must do something. Not the Ming vases. Those white elephants. You might as well jump them. You negative bastard. It's my experience that no matter how odd the object, somewhere there's a buyer for it. But uh, with these, we could have a long wait. Look, I know you're attached to this antique desk, but I know an old solicitor who fancies it. I could squeeze a hundred quid out of him. I know I can. Well, that would help. I'll ring him. I'll clean out the desk. Hello? Mr. Castle? Oh, this is uh, Ronnie of Neil Mottram's antique shop. You remember that desk you were interested oh, in? Oh, damn it. Hello? Mr. Castle? Oh, um, <laughs> that desk you were interested in, well, it just so happens to be... There must be more than a thousand pounds in gold coins here. I can't believe it. We can pay off everyone. I told you, Ronnie, Chuku is a generous god. Just like in Africa, under his protection, we will grow rich. Give him a sacrifice, and you get the reward. Julie, now you believe. You must never, never doubt. A sacred chuku. Your grateful believer thanks you for your generous protection. And once again, I pledge eternal service. We shall never forget. We shall always serve. Are you trying to pick me up? Let's not say pick up. Let's just uh, call it British hospitality. <laughs> I drink to that. Well, I thought London might be a drag. No, no, no. Not the London I'm going to show you. No. I bet you couldn't prove in Rome. Then you didn't like Rome. Left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, why? What kind of manager meet there? <laughs> Mostly cooks. All hands. On a one-block walk, I had my ass pinched 11 times. <laughs> <laughs> An awful lot of weirdos around, and who can tell what it takes to please them? Mm. My last Italian Romeo really sold me a bill of goods. He used to call me his Madonna. Said he was madly in love with me and even proposed marriage. I 
And then he took off with all my checks, money, jewels, except my ring. <laughs> well, at least you saved something out of the wreckage. Mm, this ring, and you might say my skin. Yes, that's, uh... Oh, that's lovely skin. Now tell me, after you lost everything, how did you manage to come to London? I came with my dad. He has a very good business in Stockholm. He's used to me needing money. I've been traveling a lot. Thought I'm doing my own thing since I was 20. Every now and then I get jammed up, and Papa bails me out. Dear old Papa. <laughs> and then there was, uh, there was nobody that you could count on over here. No. I'm on my own. No strings attached. I like it. step further. Every bone in my body is relaxed. I had a hunch you'd be grateful. The right chemistry. The best. I like everything around here, including all that antique jazz. I love to stay. But you could get bored. Not with you. You're very different. Thanks to Chuko. Even if he is invisible, his presence is here. What are you talking about? Our love God. Who? It may sound strange to you, but... What's all this love God bit? Sounds kinky to me. It won't, after you've met him. You mean you're not making all this up? Come with me, Elena. Come. I want to present you. What is all this? Where are you taking me? Now, don't be frightened. We are in the presence of the great, all-powerful Chuku, our love god. Show him that you are not frightened. <laughs> now, come on, let's go back. No, no, no. Not until you've revealed yourself to him. Show him how beautiful you are, Helena. <laughs> Come on now, darling. Come. Dance for him. You're crazy. Come on. Dance for him. You're crazy. Come on, dance. No, I don't want to dance. I don't want to dance for you. Him, this whole thing is crazy. Damn it, I yeah. Dance! 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 dance. dance. dance.
let you go. At your feet, I humbly place this sacrifice. And once again, I pledge eternal service. I didn't go yet. It's too early to desert us. I'm working, remember? Oh, well, come well, on. if you change your mind, the actions are mine, please. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 Tonight. Oh, shut up. I've been sitting here waiting for you. Come and help me. Neil, what happened? My God. What have you done? Who is she? Stop asking stupid questions. Help me to roll her onto this. But I... I can't. Get squeamish on me. What about the rest of her clothes? I've already burnt them. Now we've got to get rid of her. Take the robe off and burn that too. How about this ring? I'll leave it where it is. Come on. We're being followed. No, it's a lorry. It wants to pass. Light me a cigarette and stop worrying. No doubt about it. These are genuine Ming vase from the Four Dynasty. I'm inclined to agree. And if I may intrude, Jack, please note the excellent state of their preservation, especially when you consider that they date back to the 15th century. Oh, yes. Except for natural aging process, not a crack, not even a bruise. Yes, indeed. Their condition is quite remarkable. Yes. If I may ask, how did you come by them? I am not at liberty to disclose all of the details, except to assure you that it was a fortuitous uh, state purchase under a court order. After all, who can fathom the secret journeys of priceless art objects? Quite true. Quite true. Speaking of rare art objects, what are you asking for them? Actually, as museum pieces, they are priceless. But I could let you have them for... Five thousand pounds. The price is rather high. Oh, but there are no others on the market. 
Mr. Mottram, we will take them off your hands for 4,000 pounds. Say you drive a hard bargain. Four thousand is our limit. Gentlemen, they are yours. Four thousand pounds. That's absolutely incredible. You saw it happen with your own eyes. Here is the proof. <laughs> we can do anything we want. I know it'll be perfect. Let's close the shop and go to Mallorca. I've been dreaming of the beach. And you could do it with a holiday. Let's live it up. You've got it in your hands. Oh, dear. Let me bring you back to Earth. A lot of work has to be done. Some of this money goes right back into improving the shop more, better merchandise, and you're forgetting the most important thing. Our first move is not of pleasure, but to remember who made this windfall possible. We must thank Chuku. Come along. Identification will be very difficult. We'll have the newspapers publish identical pictures. Artist sketches. What good will that do? With most of her face burned away, who can recognize her? Perhaps someone will report her missing. Don't count on that. You know how many people disappear in London. One thing's for certain, the motive wasn't robbery. Just look at this ring. Must be worth a thousand pounds. Whoever killed her wasn't interested in loot. But what we do have is a pattern. Two mutilated bodies fished out of the river. Neither one robbed, and both very dead. That still leaves us without any answer. Who did it? That's exactly what the papers will be asking. Who? About five feet four inches tall, weighing about nine stone. Caucasian female. Anyone with information, please contact. They'll never find out who did it. People will phone in. Oh, sure. Cranks, lunatics, weirdos. But no one with any reliable information. I was very careful about that after I picked her up. The girl was a drifter, a loner. Her only living relative, Papa, thousands of miles away. And from what she told me about it, not very concerned. I'll wager it'll be months before he even reports her missing. But the police are sure to find Ronnie, out. Ronnie, they've got absolutely nothing to go on. Besides, Chuku will protect us. For how long? Forever. If we serve him. And serve him we must. Hello? Hello, Aunt Louise, this is Neil. Terribly sorry, but I shall have to postpone my visit. I've been improving my shop and have to take care of some new merchandise. You will forgive me, won't you? Well, what a pity. Yes, well, I know it's a nuisance. I was, oh, I was so looking forward to seeing you. So was I. You know, Neil, I don't get many visitors now at my age. Well, if you change your plans and you find you can come, I'll be home. Fine, let's leave it at that then, shall we? And do keep well, love. Goodbye. Oh, hello, Mr. Penwell. This is Neil Mottram. I wrote you last week. Yes, of course. I've been expecting you. Yes, that's why I'm phoning. I shall make the uh, trip this Saturday and bring the uh, Indian brass work. I uh, think you'll be quite delighted because I was able to acquire some very interesting objects. Quite unique. I'm very eager to see them. Saturday is fine. About what time will you be here? Oh, in the late afternoon, about five. Yes, thank you very much.
Tell me, Mr. Kingsley Dawson, are you paying cash? Yes. It's the only way I do business. heavy, isn't it? What's in here? Uh, it's loaded with that Indian brass work for Mr. Penwell. I'll put it in the van for you. No, no, no. I can manage. Thank you. How long will you be gone? Oh, just overnight, unless I'm delayed by an estate sale. I'll take a look at the local papers and see if there are any auctions. Otherwise, I'll just deliver the brass work to Mr. Penwell. Well, don't hurry back. It would do you good to get away. And while I'm gone, Ronnie, you stay here and don't leave the store. Of course I won't. Have a successful trip. But garage, um, look, I just can't get my, my, my van to start. It's in the car park of the, uh, the pub in the village. I, I leave the keys um, under the floor mat, which would be good enough to, to tow it into your garage, and then I'll, uh, uh, I'll call you later. I was wondering whether you might have a room for a stranded traveler. Neil! <laughs> what on earth 
are you doing here? Well, come on in. Hello, Dolly. Surprised? Well, yes, but pleasantly. I mean, are you serious about a room? Oh, yes. I, uh, I've got some business near here. My van broke down just outside of town. I had to tramp around for hours to find a garage for repair. Oh, too bad. Yes, yeah, so if you can put me out for the night, but uh, no favors, please. I uh, intend to pay the same rates as any of your other guests. Uh, well, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> Come on. Still got it, Dolly. You don't change, do you? Uh, you're not married, are you? Oh, hello, love. Have a good time at Bingo. No, I'm not married, actually. But I do have a boyfriend, a very jealous one. He works as a steward on a cross-channel ferry. Tonight, he's in Ostend. Oh, that means we could, um... Go out to dinner. I'll buy you the best meal around here. Hmm. <laughs> you know, that was the best meal I've had in weeks. Yes. Oh, I almost forgot. I brought you something for dessert. Mm. Uh, I'll bring it right down for you. Favorite. Mm. Yeah. Have some. Nice. Yes. It's strong, isn't it? Oh. oh, I don't think so. It's just that you haven't had any uh, lately. And you can have one. Oh, Dolly, I wouldn't dream of cutting in on your cherry brandy. Besides, I had too much wine for dinner. I'm making a pig of myself. Now, now, now. Let me be the judge of that. Mm. Actually, you look... irresistible. Hey, I can't finish the bottle. Why not? You've always had a good head for brandy. <laughs> mm. Are you trying to get me sloshed? No. I'm just trying to lower your resistance. You really don't have to. I wouldn't want to get too drunk to enjoy our lovely reunion. So let's go upstairs. <laughs> Just one little one for a bonus. Uh, you know I never refuse you anything. Yes. I must look mess. You're lovely, darling.
I speak to Mr. Penwell, please? I'm not sorry, sir. Mr. Penwell is out. This is Mr. Neil Martram calling. May I leave a message? Of course, sir. Go ahead. Tell him I was delayed because my van broke down. However, I can arrange to bring the brass work tomorrow afternoon. sacred Chuko. Here is the sacrifice I promised you. This body and this soul now belongs to you.
Neil. Uh. Oh. Good morning, beautiful. Must be close to noon. I so you deserve the rest. I had the strangest dream that you were gone. <laughs> That'd be a fool to get out of a warm bed with you in it. Uh -huh. Neil, did we? Did we ever? In a way that I shall never forget. Then I didn't disappoint you. Oh, Dolly, you were absolutely marvelous. You were everything I ever wanted in a woman. Then why are you rushing off? I've got these stone brass works to deliver, and I'm late already. You should go back to sleep, huh? I can't sleep. I'm awake now, and I want you. Oh, I want you to know I really do, but I've got to go. Maybe next weekend. Huh? Is Mr. Mottram around? No, he's away delivering an order to a client in the country. Do you expect him back today? I really couldn't say. Are you his assistant? No, I'm his associate, actually. Is that why you work on Sunday? Well, just a few odds and ends. And besides, I live here. Mind if I have a look around? I couldn't really say no, could I? What's upstairs? Mr. Mottram's flat and a room for me. What's downstairs? The, uh... As you see, we keep one or two things down here. A workbench, a few tools. When we can, we, we touch up and repair antiques. Hmm. Ah, Mr. Mottram, I was hoping you'd get back. What can I do for you? I wonder if you'd be good enough to come along with me. Superintendent Bellamy would like to speak to you. Oh, what about? Something urgent has cropped up. Can you come now? Well, can't it wait until tomorrow? I'm home. The superintendent just would like to see you now. Unless you have any objections. Well, Ronnie, take my suitcase upstairs and then park the van. Now, Superintendent, if you'll please tell me why I was dragged away from my shop just as I arrived after an exhausting weekend business trip. I'm sorry, but it was of the utmost importance. I sent for you because of a Mrs. Louise Nash. My dear old Aunt Louise. Are you not going to tell me that she's committed a crime? Hardly. Mrs. Nash is dead. Oh, some kind of accident. Why do you say that? If Aunt Louise had died a natural death, you certainly wouldn't have summoned me here. Your aunt was murdered. Her body was discovered early this morning by a milkman. Hmm. Aunt Louise murdered. Stabbed in the throat. Must have happened between midnight and 5 a.m. Have you found the killer? Not yet, but we will. Mr. Mottram, you don't appear to be too shocked by what I've told you. I'm a realist. I'm sure, it's a horrible way for Aunt Louise to die, but all things considered, she had a, a good life and a long one. Her husband made up provision for her. She had a lot of money? As I said, she was very well off. Any idea who is going to inherit her money? Once, when she was in a very good mood, she told me that uh, she would remember me in her will. <sighs> Superintendent, you don't think I killed my aunt for the money? I didn't say you had murdered her, Mr. March, for her money or for any other reason. Yet you haven't uh, ruled me out as a suspect. Otherwise, why bring me here? All I would like you to do is to help us. How?
Your aunt has not officially been identified. As her nephew, you could do that. Unless, of course, the sight of her dead body would shock you. I've never seen a corpse, but uh, if it is necessary, I could try to bear up to it. Mr. Mundrum, is this your aunt, Mrs. Louise Neff? Yes. Man must be mad to do this and think he can get away with it. Will it be all? Just a formality to sign the identification papers. You were away over the weekend. That's right. Any special reason? Partly business, partly to uh, uh, renew an old friendship. Perhaps if instead I had gone to visit Aunt Louise, she might still be with us. We know you're tired. Just a few details about where you stayed and who with. Where did you spend Saturday night? Uh, in a Kingswood lodging house with an old friend of mine, Miss Darwin Newman. Will Miss Newman be willing to testify to that? It's a rather delicate situation. You could put her in a, in a difficult spot, you see. She happens to be engaged to another man. And I spent the night with her. You're quite a lady killer, aren't you? I do my share. I promise you, Mr. Mottram, I'll be very discreet. I rather thought, Miss Newman, you'd prefer to talk here. Yes, I, I do appreciate it. Luigi would be furious if he found out. It's that Italian blood, you see. And he's crazy jealous. I mean, if some man so much as looks in my direction. But uh, this little episode went further than just looking. Well, yes, we did get carried away. I won't lie about that. And Mr. Mottram spent the night with you? Well, I... Went to bed with him, if that's what you mean. What time? Well, really, Sergeant, I wasn't clock-watching. <laughs> I was full of food and wine and feeling no pain. And then? Well, then I woke up and, and I was with Neil. As I say, I, I don't really remember too much about it. I had such a lot of cherry brandy, you see. It's my weakness. <laughs> anyway, I, um, I did spend the night with him, yes. Does he call on you often? Oh, this was his first visit in three years. Three years? And no communication in all that time? He could have knocked me over when he turned up. Apparently he did. Neil's the sort of person it's very hard to forget. Hey, I don't want you to think I'm the sort that flops into bed with any Tom, Dick or Harry. Of course not. And really, what you do in your own bedroom is none of my business. Well, at all angles of your story, check out. The van was picked up by the Rexford garage and fixed. He did call on Mr. Penwell and transact some business in brass antiques. I don't think he's our man. And I'm certain he is. Well, if you question him, he won't crack. Oh, I'll give you that. He's got nerves of steel. I watched him when he was staring at the corpse of his aunt. Well, he seemed in a state of shock, a put-on. I know he turned away as delicately as a ballet dancer, but he didn't fool me. He'd have high tea on a slab in the morgue and enjoy it. And don't forget, you checked out his story. He spent the whole night with Dolly Newman. That's his alibi. Look, I saw Dolly, you didn't. Whatever else Mottram may be, he certainly looks fastidious. That Dolly woman is not the kind of bird he'd go for. In fact, one would have to be pretty desperate to sail into that port. O oh Lord, we beseech thee to bless this grave to be the peaceful resting place of 
the body of Louise Nash. We restore to thy divine keeping her soul, and to the earth her remains. May she find everlasting peace in thy care. We are gathered here for the reading of the will of the late Louise Nash, in which I drew up myself a year ago. It is a simple document, brief and to the point. I, Louise Nash, being of sound mind and memory, to declare this to be my last will and testament. To my dear and best friend, Mary Lonsdale, I bequeath 1,000 pounds, and uh, to the Maybury home for the aged, 500 pounds. To uh, Frank Trainer, my faithful gardener, all of the tools in the potting shed, the Coppola. Yes. All the balance of my estate, stocks, bonds, bank deposits, and other effects, together with the freehold of the property known as the Laurels, I bequeath to my nephew, Neil Mottram, my only living relative. Mr. Mottram? Mr. Mottram? Mr. Mottram? to startle you, Mr. Mottram, but you seem to be lost in your grief. Sorry. Sorry. Mrs. Lonsdale, Mr. Trainer, would you be so kind as to step into my outer office? My clerk has some papers there for you to sign. Oh, of course. Uh, this is a private discussion, Mr. Mottram, concerning uh, your interests, only you already know that you were the major beneficiary under your aunt's estate. That's poor Aunt Louise. Yes, indeed. I hope you don't mind, but I have taken the liberty of finding out a few facts. I had, of course, the full cooperation of uh, the, the, pardon me, the, the bank manager. Uh, I thought you might like to know the amount of your inheritance. Yes, well, I suppose sooner or later one must face up to these matters. Yes, indeed. You must understand that these figures are only estimates. But I would say, exclusive of your aunt's house, and after deducting death duties and all the etc., your total will come to about uh, 25,000 pounds. Well, I, I had no idea Aunt Louise had that much. Oh, yes. Yes. Their investments were very sound. And all those who say to myself, she was very well advised in business matters. Also, available at the bank in cash on our account is a matter of 1,500 pounds that you can pick up immediately. About the house, well, it's open for you to occupy whenever you like. I have no intention of moving into that house. I mean, well, I would feel a bit queasy about living in a house where Aunt Louise was murdered. I do understand it. I mean, uh, in fact, I would like to dispose of the property. Oh, if you so wish, I could easily put it on the market. Yes, please do, including the furniture. As soon as possible, I would like to erase that awful memory from my mind. Yes, I don't blame you. It so happens I do know of a very good firm of estate agents who could take care of the whole matter. Yes. Cheers. This much we have established. Mottram left his shop in Spalding Street around 12 on Saturday. En route, he had lunch at a pub in Fairford. 
after which he drove to the outskirts of Kingswood where his van broke down. He phoned Rexford Garage from there, and about five o'clock they came round and picked up the van and towed it back to the garage. Mottram then walked to 14 Mercer Road where he met Dolly Newman and engaged a room. They had dinner around the corner at a restaurant called La Strada at 8 o'clock and walked back to the boarding house. Then supposedly he spent the night with her. After leaving Dolly Newman, the following morning he picked up his van, which had been repaired, and drove to Sidford, here, where he called on a Mr. Penwell with some brass antiques. That transaction lasted about two hours, after which he drove back to his shop in London. So you see, gentlemen, our investigation of Mr. Mottram as a prime suspect leads to a dead end unless he has an accomplice. I can't buy that, sir. I've studied the man. He has the smell of a lone wolf. Still, we have to face the possibility of barking up the wrong tree. He spent the night in Kingswood. 71 miles away in Redcliffe, between midnight and 5 a.m., his Aunt Louise was murdered. His alibi seems airtight. That's what makes me suspicious. His alibi is too good. All openings are covered. He's never said one wrong word, never made a wrong move. But he will. How can you be so sure? Well, sir, his name has cropped up twice in three murders. There are 60 million people living in the British Isles, almost 9 million of them in metropolitan London. I'm no mathematician, but the odds against the same name coming up twice are astronomical. I tell you, he's our man. But proving it is another matter. We need strong evidence to stand up in court. If we could only crack his alibi. Dolly Newman. She's the only weak spot in our story. Sergeant! Oh, this is a surprise. Miss Newman, there are some more questions. You know more about Neil Mottram, much more than you've told me. I'm going to get the whole story. Now, just clear your head and think back. You told me you hadn't seen him in three years. That's right. When did you first meet him? Well, actually, it was a pickup in a pub in Piccadilly. Oh, nothing vulgar. I don't go for rough trade. And after we'd had a few drinks, I asked him to give me a lift home. And at the door, he asked me for a date, and I said yes. Where did he take you? Dinner, pictures. That's all. The first time, yes. Oh, he wasn't the pushy sort. After a while, well, we did get quite chummy. How long did that go on? About six months. Why did you stop seeing him? <laughs> he had weird ideas of entertainment. I mean, his idea of a good night out was to take me to a coven. You know, all those crazy witches and things. Frightened me out of my wits. And then I suddenly realized that he was all, he was all involved with this black magic. I mean, he tried to get me involved as well, but I just thought it was ridiculous, and I told him so. <laughs> Witchcraft isn't my cup of tea. I mean, <laughs> I didn't want any part of those kooks. What went on at those sessions? Oh, they were wild. In the woods, flaming torches, a and a fella all dressed up as a high priest with, with big devil horns. Well, then, they suddenly brought in a young girl and started talking a lot of mumbo-jumbo about being offered as a, as a human sacrifice. Oh, great Shuku, father of us all. Listen to me as I pay tribute to you, master of my fate. I thank you for the generous gift you have heaped upon me. I swear renewed allegiance to you, my sovereign. Save and protect me in all I do. Our bond is sealed in blood. Lord of the night, we make this compact with you whose power rises from below 
and extends over the vast reaches of the earth and the seven seas. We beseech you to grant our wish so that we may serve you. Now repeat after me. Paladino, Paladino. Osofano, Osofano. Sacramontum, Sacramontum. Witches of the night. The fact that Mottram is tied in with black magic is very significant. There's no law against witchcraft. If people think that they could fly on broomsticks, nobody could stop them. I know that, but when there are ritualistic killings, when there are human sacrifices, it certainly adds up to murder. But I admit, we haven't proved it yet. But now there's something concrete to go on. We've connected Mottram with black magic. Three women have been murdered in the last eight weeks. We've ruled out rape and robbery. Two have been fished out of the water and one was found on the lawn of her home. Each a victim of strange mutilation. They look like ritualistic murders and in two of them as we know, Mottram's name has come up. Where is the place to be now? He's been staring at you ever since he came in. He looks absolutely bewitched. I wish he'd go to hell. I think he's trying to pick you up. <laughs> I you bet. can never tell about these businessmen. By day, the executives rattle around their plush offices, shouting orders, frightening the poor secretaries. And by night, they let their hair down and become screaming queens. <laughs> Not this one. Not this one. He's coming over. <laughs> Finish your drink. I want to talk to you. What do you want from me? First, I'll tell you what I don't want. That's a lot of palaver and lies about your boss. I've already told you what I know. Not all of it, Ronnie. Yes, I have. Don't play games with me. You tell me the truth or I'll knock it out of you. You have no right to push me around like that. Don't tell me what to do. I want to know about Neil Mottram and his black magic. How deep is he in witchcraft? I don't know what you're talking about. You're a stinking liar. You call yourself his associate, you live in his flat, you must share his secrets. Has he ever taken you on one of those visits to the Prince of Darkness? Never. All I know about is my work at the shop, buying and selling. Don't give me that. You told me the truth about Mottram. I've given it to you! Ronnie, it seems I'm not getting through to you. Well, we'll just have to start all over again. I can't stand it, Neil! The way they questioned and slapped me. He nearly choked me to death. I tell you, this Sergeant Wall is onto you. He knows you're into black magic. One more day and I'll make her run for it. Yes, glass. Run away to the arms of the police. Don't you understand, Ronnie? That's exactly what they're hoping you do. Run! You play their game now! Only black magic is no crime. Thousands and thousands of people practice witchcraft. Yeah. Even if they can't prove anything, I'm still scared. It just doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? The fix we're in. You've just come into a bloody fortune in cash. More money than we've ever dreamed of. With the sale of the house, nearly 60,000 pounds. We could close the shop, travel, get those damned buzzards off our backs, enjoy life, feel safe. You forget one thing, Ronnie. Who made that fortune possible, Hugo? Oh, yes. We can run away from the police, but never from Chuku. As long as we serve him, we are safe. He will always protect us. How? On whose terms? You know the answer to that. Well, that means what it's always meant. 
sacrifice, the reward, then another bloody sacrifice. When does it all end? Never. This is Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Peter Lombardi. Oh, Mr. Lombardi, were you referred or did you read me notice? Yes, on the board in Soho. Uh, I would like to call on you. Oh, very well. The address is 214, 214, Ashland Place. It's flat five on the second floor. 214, Ashland Place. When are you thinking of coming? This afternoon. Oh, we're in a hurry, are we? Well, I can understand that. But we'd better make an exact time, because, you see, the kind of massage that I give is rather popular. It's quite electrifying, in fact. Yes, I'm sure. Two o'clock, all right? Yeah, two o'clock will be fine. Oh, but you better be prompt, because no matter how much time you use up, I always charge the full hour. Of course, some gentlemen are faster than others, but you can have from two till three. Thank you very much. Bye. Neil, are we having lunch together? No, I've got something more important than food on my mind. Go anywhere you wish. It's Sunday. You're on your own. I'm busy. What are you up to? Another sacrifice for the hungry chuku. Hello, Ronnie. Hi, Jane. What shall I have? I'll have a scotch, a large one. Anything happen? No, nobody came out here. Right, I report to Sergeant War.
Jane, I'll have one more. Double. What's it, your birthday? me asking, but I always wait for the party to identify themselves. That way I can be sure. Oh, we are prompt, aren't we? Practically on the dot. Yes, uh, you did warn me to take advantage of the full hour. Yes, yes. Good shopper, are we? I like to get my money's worth. Oh, you will, you will. Come on, sit down. And talking of money, as you were, you know, I never speak about it on the phone. It's not elegant. Not very discreet. No, it's not discreet either. But of course, we can talk about it now. Mind you, it does depend what you want. I mean, some of my clients require more special treatment. It even takes both of us. Both? <laughs> oh, I'm referring to my flatmate, Myrtle. Of course, if you're one of those foreign kind, you'll have to wait. Because she's out at the moment, visiting a sick friend. She'll be back at three. Oh, I, I don't think we'll require any help from Myrtle. I'm sure that you can handle things by yourself. <laughs> of course I can. I've never had any complaints. <laughs> Come on. This way. Look what we have here. Ultra red lamp. Double voltage vibrator. Nerve point penetrator. Muscle soother. You name it, we have it. You need it, we use it. Well? Hmm? Well, now that you've... Uh, hmm? Shown me what you can do, how much do you charge? Hmm. Well, looking at you, I'd say... Swedish massage. Just for a general tone-up. Followed by... Double voltage vibrator, guaranteed to make a new man of you, comes to 20 pounds. Hmm? That isn't very much, considering. <laughs> I like to get paid in advance. Advance. Hmm? That's it. Now, take your clothes off, lie on the couch, Let's pretend it's the doctor's, eh? <laughs> You're gonna have another one, Ronnie? No, I've had enough. I've really had enough. Lombardi, look at you. Still dressed? I didn't think you were the bashful kind. Then, perhaps it wasn't a massage you came for, eh? Well, look what we have here. I mean, if you're on the kinky side, well, we have everything for your pleasure. Hmm? Sally. I didn't come from that so much. Oh, you are a soft one, aren't you? Hmm? Thank you. 
sacrifice. As you required. I'm so sorry I pushed you. Rude sod. How far did you go? Out of the corner pub. Knocked back quite a load. Then three doubles while I sipped half a pint. Calling car K3. Calling car K3. Car K3? Wilson speaking. This is Sergeant Wall. Another girl has been murdered. We're on our way to Mottram's shop and we're bringing armed men. Do not attempt to enter. Wait for our arrival. Over. This is understood. Over and out. Mottram. Get in the back door. Get this door open, Constable. Come on! Mottram, open up. Open this door. Open this door, we'll break it down. Stand back, Wall. Back off. Ah! 
back or I'll let it ride. Stand back, you can't hurt me. Stand back. Come on, Mottram, you bloody lunatic. Drop that axe. Don't come near me or I'll let it fly. Can't hurt me. Last. <laughs>